Thank you for joining us. I'm Matt. And I'm Randy. And you tuned into the Morning Devotion. We're here to encourage you through the Word so that you can be strong in the faith. And live victoriously in Christ. Amen. Randy's got a verse from Psalms, but let's open up with a quick word of thanks in the way of a prayer. Thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you, Lord, for for sparing, Lord, and, and bringing, Lord, rain instead of devastation. We pray and we ask, Lord, that you help any trees that have been fallen to be cleared. Lord, protect your children and put your hand upon them during this time. Lord, we just thank you for even in the midst of a storm, God, you are still there. You are still our protector, our rock, our shield. Lord, we thank you for the consistency, Lord, of your word. That, Father, when trials come, yes. that your word is something we can stand on. Amen. Anoint it, we pray Amen. in Jesus' name. Thank Amen. you. Amen. God, God's, God's word is a solid rock. Amen. And hopefully you have built your faith upon Jesus God's Christ. word. Yep. <laughs> and Jesus, what Jesus said, that that is something that you can stand on that is a firm foundation. Amen. Because when the winds come and the rain blows upon your faith, if you have been found built upon sand, the, the storms of this life will wash away that sand yeah. and the house will fall. Yeah. But when your faith is built on the rock, Amen. <laughs> no matter what happens, it's Amen. taken care of. Amen. Rather than starting in our reading of 1 Samuel 18, 19, 17 area. Yep. I'm going to start with Psalm 16. It says, A Mictam of David. Preserve me, O God, for in you I put my trust. O my soul, you have said to the Lord, You are my Lord. My goodness is nothing apart from you. As for the saints who are on the earth, they are the excellent ones, in whom is all my delight. Amen. Their sorrows shall be multiplied who hasten after another God. They drink offerings of blood. I will not offer nor take up their names on my lips. O Lord, you are the portion of my inheritance and my cup. You maintain my lot. The lines have fallen to me in pleasant places. Yes, I have a good inheritance. I will bless the Lord who has given me counsel. My heart also instructs me in the night seasons. I have set the Lord always before me, because he is at my right hand, I shall not be moved. Therefore my heart is glad, and my glory rejoices. My flesh also will rest in hope, for you will not leave me, I soul, in Sheol, nor will you allow your Holy One to see corruption. You will show me the path of life. In your presence is fullness, fullness of, of joy. joy. At your right hands our pleasures forevermore. A Psalm of David. David who slew Goliath. David who became king. David who just came off an incredible victory of, of slaying Goliath against the odds. God fought the battle for him. Amen. That David wrote that Psalm. Yes. And this David you would think that after winning such an, uh, an incredible victory before so many people, and oh, they saw it, they sung songs mm -hmm. that, that said, Saul has killed his thousands. And David his tens of thousands. Tens of thousands. Well, David went from an incredible victory to a storm. <laughs> because from now forward in David's life's, life up until a certain point there was a problem and there was things that were happening in his life that were not those that you would think that a great war hero, war hero would, would be receiving things that were promised some things didn't come to pass. The things that he was going to get, they had given them to somebody else. In, 
And, and you know, we've always said that when you're called by God, that puts you on the front lines of the mm -hmm. battle. Um, know that when you are obedient to the Lord, Amen. it doesn't mean that all things now are going to be easy. No. It means you have just been called to be in the front lines and you're going to have to trust that God is going to give you the victory, that he's going to be your strength. That is where David was. He was doing exactly what God called him to do. You know, he trusted the Lord. But now that put him in the front lines. Amen. You know, there's a lot of envy and bitterness and jealousy from people. And we've talked about how the enemy, he came to kill, steal, and destroy. Mm -hmm. You see, he knows that every child of God is going to enjoy all the blessings yes. he should have had. But he turned his back upon God. He let pride come in Saul. and he, well, I'm talking about the enemy. I'm talking yeah. about the devil. Okay. He had a wonderful position with the Lord, but he decided that he could be as God. Pride. Pride came in. Pride comes before destruction and a haughty spirit before the fall. Six things that the Lord hate, yea, seven abomination to God, according to Proverbs, mm -hmm. and one of those is pride. Well, David was fighting and fought Goliath, mm -hmm. had an incredible victory. Meanwhile, over on the sidelines, if you could read verse 55 of chapter 17, meanwhile, on the sidelines, King Saul was watching, and this is what happened. It says, when Saul saw David going out against the Philistines, he said to Abner, the commander of the army, Abner, whose son is this youth? Who is this guy? Who is this guy? And youth, youth. He was young. Yeah. He wasn't old enough to be yeah. in the battle. <laughs> and Abner said, as your soul lives, O king, I do not know. So the king said, inquire whose son this young man is. This, it says in King James, it says strapling uh, or stripling. And, and what that meant, that this guy was so young that he was not old enough to enter into public affairs. So in their culture... Boys were boys to a certain mm -hmm. point, and until the boys became men, and then they were allowed to interact. It's kind of like the bar mitzvah yeah. that, that we have today to where they're just boys. But then there comes a point in their life that they go and transition from young men into men-men. And it says... As, so the king said, inquire whose son this young man is. Then as David returned from the slaughter of the Philistine, Abner took him and brought him before Saul with the head of the Philistine in his hand. So they went into the battle, grabbed him and said, come here, Saul wants to see you. <laughs> and Saul said to him, whose son are you, young man? So David answered, I am the son of your servant Jesse the Bethlehemite. And, I thought, and, and it came and it came to pass when he had made an end of speaking with unto Saul that the soul of Jonathan was knit to the soul of David and Jonathan loved him as his own soul and Saul took him that day and would let him go would no more wouldn't would not let him go according to, in yeah. some versions but would let him go no more in King James home to his father's house there we put the chapters in there so really verse number one of 18 is actually it's part of the same story that's happening in verse 48 I, I don't know what really was going on but it seems like Saul would have known who who this guy was he would have questioned but you know what sometimes God has a plan in your life and he may not to have to check with all the local authorities for you to be able to do that man <laughs> amen and when god has called you and told you to do something in your life you need to move forward with that mm -hmm. even if some people may say oh you can't do that you 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 can't be a missionary you can't start a church you can't tell them about jesus you can't open a ministry you can't preach that way but God has a call in your life. And the biggest call in your life is that he is calling you to salvation. He's calling you to repentance. 
He is calling you to follow him. Just as those followed Jesus back in the day, God is calling you to follow him today. So won't you give him your heart and know that you can have faith like David. Yep. You can stand upon a rock, a firm foundation, when you ask Jesus into your heart. Ask him today. Yes. Bow your head and pray, Lord, come into my heart. Let me, Lord, live according to your word. Increase my faith, Lord. Forgive me the things I've done wrong. I give my life and my heart to you, God. Use me in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hope so. that today, if you've never asked Jesus into your heart before, that you would let us know and say, today I asked Jesus. I did it. Thanks for joining us today. So keep, keep a praise song in your heart. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Amen. We'll see you tomorrow morning at 7 o'clock.